Matthew here, your BRS beginner guru, and today I'm gonna to show you how to set up the Aquatech Booster Pump Kit. What comes with this kit? Well, you get the booster pump itself, the pressure switch, and the power supply. If you use a float valve to automatically turn off your RODI unit when your reservoir is full, then you will definitely benefit from installing this pressure switch. But if you don't have a float valve, then you're just not gonna use the pressure switch. Why install a booster pump? An RDI filter requires a certain amount of water pressure to run efficiently. But what exactly does that mean? The backbone of any RODI system is the RO membrane. Inside this canister, water pressure is needed to push pure H2O through the semi-permeable membrane, separating the clean from the dirty water. If there's not enough water pressure inside this canister, then that pure H2O can't force its way through the membrane so the result is you get a lot more wastewater and not very much clean water. In essence, a low water pressure means that your RODI filter will produce clean water at a much slower rate. On top of that, more dirty water will sneak past the RO membrane, meaning your DI resin canister is gonna have to pick up the slack. So installing the Aquatech booster pump has three main advantages. Number one, more clean water, quicker number two, less wastewater, and number three, you won't use up your DI resin nearly as quickly. Who would benefit from an RODI booster pump? The ideal range for a BRS RODI system is between 75 and 85 PSI. A PSI of over 90 is risky because it could cause leaks in your RODI system, and a PSI of under 50 will mean your RODI system will run much less efficiently, less clean water, more dirty water, and more DI resin. So if your water pressure is less than 60 PSI, you are a great candidate for a booster pump. How to install the Aquatech booster pump kit. To install the Aquatech booster pump kit, you will need an RO tube cutter or sharp razor blades, screws, and a screwdriver. You will need to mount the booster pump near your RODI filter with an electrical outlet nearby. For optimal performance, mount the pump vertically with the pump head facing upward to avoid trapping air in the unit. But if a vertical install isn't feasible, mounting the booster pump on a flat surface will work just fine. The booster pump needs to be installed in between the water source and the RODI unit itself. The booster pump weighs almost five pounds, so wherever you decide to mount it, make sure your screws can not only support the weight, but can also support the constant vibration the booster pump makes when it's turned on. Basically what I'm trying to tell you is if you intend to mount this onto drywall, either find the studs or be sure to use really good drywall screws. Before we start cutting any RO tubes, be sure the water is turned off and if your RODI unit comes with a manual flush valve, be sure it is turned to the inline position shown here. Now that you've mounted your booster pump, let's connect it to the RODI unit. If you look at the top of the booster pump you will see two arrows which indicate the direction in which water needs to flow. Take an RO tube cutter or razor blade and cut the red RO input water line in between the water source and the filter. It's best not to use scissors here because even a slightly rough cut can lead to future leaks, especially with the increase in pressure. Now let's remove the two rubber pieces from the booster inlet and outlet. To do this, hold the push connect collar down against the pump and pull the rubber pieces out. Take the red RO tube from the water source and push it into the input side of the pump. Pull it out a couple times to make sure it's securely attached. Now take the RO tube from the RODI filter and push it firmly into the booster pump's output. Give it a couple tugs to be sure it's securely attached. The pressure switch can be installed anywhere on the blue clean water line. There is no directionality to the pressure switch, so it doesn't matter which way it's installed. Just be sure it's installed close enough to the booster pump so the power cord can connect. Take the RO tube cutter or razor blade and cut the blue RO tube at any point between the RO filter and the reservoir. Push both blue RO tubes into the pressure switch and give them 
both a couple tugs to make sure they're securely attached. The pressure switch comes with two wiring pigtails. Attach one of those pigtails to the booster pump and the other to the power supply. Before we plug in the booster pump, we're gonna perform a low pressure water test to check for any leaks. To do this, slowly turn on your water source and let it run for a minute while you check the RODI filter for leaks. If there is a leak, it can probably be fixed by simply pushing the RO tube more firmly into the push connect fitting. If that doesn't work, disconnect the RO tube from the leaky fitting and cut off a fresh piece of RO tube with a a sharp razor blade or that RO tube cutter. Then reattach the tube, give it a couple tugs, and leak test the unit again. Once the leak test is complete, plug in the power adapter to turn on the booster pump. And remember, it's really important that anytime the booster pump is plugged in, the water must be turned on because running the booster pump dry could damage the unit. Once the booster pump has run for a minute, check the pressure gauge. The ideal range should be between 75 and 80 PSI. If the PSI is 90 or over, that means we need to reduce the pressure of the pump. To do this, take a 1 16th inch Allen wrench and insert it into the top of the booster pump here. Turn the screw slowly until the RODI pressure reads 75 to 85 PSI. The pressure switch should be pre-calibrated to automatically turn off the booster pump when there's a back pressure of 40 PSI. But if for some reason your pressure switch isn't doing this, you can adjust the pressure point. Just take a 5 one hundredths Allen wrench and insert it into the top of the pressure switch here and turn the screw. The first time you use the booster pump and the pressure switch, open and close the float valve several times to be sure that the booster pump does in fact turn off. That's it for the booster pump and pressure switch install, but what if you don't use a float valve in your RODI system? Well, installation of the booster pump kit is that much easier. But before I show you how to do it, it's important to know that without using the pressure switch, your booster pump will run continuously until you unplug it for the wall. And since the increased pressure means you will make clean water a lot faster, it's really important that you keep an eye on your reservoir to make sure it doesn't overfill. To install the booster pump without the pressure switch, simply install the booster pump as we've previously discussed in this video. And then rather than install the pressure switch, simply plug the booster pump directly into the power adapter. That's it. The link to the Aquatech booster pump kit is in the description below. Click here for more great BRS how-to videos. And until next time, be well and happy reefing everybody.